It is every bit as powerful today as your laptop is. Did you leave your laptop just laying around so anybody can play with it? I think not. Uh, so, what's the next step you need to take? If you're not using the function, turn it off. What do I mean by that? If you're not hooked up to a Wi-Fi network and you're not planning on being hooked up to a Wi-Fi network, turn Wi-Fi off. Can't hack on it if it's not running. If you probably have Bluetooth turned on a lot of cars, a lot of our cars today, you get in your car, the Bluetooth links up, and you can get your cell phone and you get music and whatnot across the phone in the car. Well, that is a direct hacking point that is relatively easy to hack on. So, if you're not in your car, turn the Bluetooth off. There's, there's usually a simple pull down menu on your phone, and you tap it to turn off the Bluetooth. Again, if it's off, it can't be hacked. <clears throat> and then finally, there's a new hack that's come out in the last year or so. It's getting very, very prevalent, unfortunately. Have you all seen any charging stations? They provide them at the airports, they provide them at uh, malls, they provide them around the place, uh, trade shows and whatnot. You put up these nice machines, hey, plug your phone in. Yeah, if you're lucky, it really is a charging station. If you're unlucky, it's a charging station and a hacking station. And as soon as you plug your phone into it, it proceeds to start hacking your phone. Now, you can avoid that. There are little adapters that only pass power through a USB connection. Some of those little, uh, you've probably seen uh, some of the companies give away these little cables that have multiple outputs, so you can charge whatever kind of phone you got. Those only pass power. They don't pass the USB signal. So if you're going to plug into something that you don't know, that you don't own, plug into something that only does power, at least knows, and at the moment I am not aware of any hacks into a cell phone across the power connectors. Now, I can read some information. If you're doing things with the phone, I can see power surges, and I can actually interpolate some information. But at least I can't hack the entire phone. So, if you're not using it, turn it off. And things that are free, be suspicious. They're not necessarily there to help you, but they're to help someone else help themselves to your data. Next slide, please. Talk about the Internet of Things. Finally, I've been preaching for years about this, but FBI has finally come out and said something. Smart televisions. You can't buy a TV over 20 inches anymore that's not a smart television. It wants you to sign away your rights. It puts up little screens, waivers, hey, sign this. I just bought a 55-inch TV that I'm using as a monitor in my office because I need a big display for some of the wiring work I do. Half of the TV won't work because I refuse to sign Samsung's disclaimers giving them rights to all the data that crosses that TV. So I'm not going to sign it and I don't put the TV up to the internet. But you need to be aware of smart things, smart TVs especially, they've got cameras built into them, they've got microphones built into them. What are they watching? What are they listening to? How sensitive are those microphones? I'm going to tell you a little story here shortly but just how sensitive some of these microphones are. It's quite scary. Uh, these TVs all run, they run apps now. It's even worse. It's got Netflix, it's got all these other apps on it. Free TV services, free movies, free this, free that. Again, I always have to ask, when something's free, what's the real cost? These apps can make use of those, uh, they can make use of the built-in uh, cameras and can make use of the built-in microphones. What are these apps listening to when they're running? If you're a business person, this can have a big impact on you. Next slide, please. So you've got to, you've got to secure your TV. You need to understand your TV. Don't just blindly sign those disclaimers that the vendor wants you to sign. They say click this and approve, approve this or go on. Some of them want you to go online and sign something for the TV to fully act. Know what's in your TV, decide if it's worth it to you, or decide if you're not going to sign it. I needed a certain size monitor, I've had it for a good price, I just didn't sign anything, so half of the set just doesn't work. It works well enough for my need, that's good enough. I will never sign the Samsung agreement. Very point blank, full stop. If you've got a TV that uh, has a camera built into it, you know, where did you put the TVs? 
in your office? Okay. He's in your bedroom. Put some tape or something over that camera. If he's got a built-in microphone, be aware if you're having business conversations of a sensitive nature related to HIPAA, related to legal conversations, related to other conversations of a fiduciary nature, you are at risk if that microphone broadcasts you that stuff out of your office. So be aware of what's there and decide whether you actually need that device. Next slide, please. Okay, the other thing, digital assistance. Here we go, my favorite, favorite topic today. We've got Android, we've got Amazon, we've got Alexa, we've got all these new toys. And I'll bet a bunch of you got some of them over the holidays. And they're just wonderful. You plug them in. Alexa, play music. Alexa, turn on the TV. Alexa, change the channel. Or Google Home, or what have you. Here's the problem. Those microphones are way more sensitive than you think. <coughs> And it's already been documented that Alexa wants a couple who's having a private conversation in their house. I don't know exactly where they're in their house. They were having a private conversation. Alexa was listening, thought it heard the key word Alexa, listened to their conversation, picked up as they were talking about a particular person, husband and wife having a conversation about somebody. Might not have been the most polite conversation. It was a private one. Alexa picked up the name of the person they were talking about. Alexa transcribed the entire conversation and told it. Okay? So you really need to be aware of what is going on, what data is being collected, and what control do you have on that data. Again, there are fiduciary implications here if you have a business that is impacted by uh, health, legal uh, uh, or uh, financial advice, you are impacted if this information gets out. Next slide, please. So this is a true story. It just happened in my house over the holidays. We managed to get an Alexa park. And Deborah, she knows how sensitive I am to these things. She said, can I come and use this? I'd like to. She's home for a while because uh, they're re renovating her office. And she likes to have a little, little music. Can we use this? I said, certainly. I'll put it on a private network. I'll set it up so you can do it. And when you're not using it, please unplug it. Because just leaving it power off is not enough. And you'll understand why it's not enough in just a minute. <clears throat> so I set it all up for it. It's on a private network. Can't reach anything else within our house, within my office. Everything's completely separate. All the things that I tell people to do. We go out to lunch one day, we come back, Deborah goes back up to her office, and immediately goes to tell Alexa to, to play some music. Now I'm downstairs, and all of a sudden I'm hearing a voice in the living room, which is downstairs, better than 30 feet away, and one floor below, where Deborah's at in a small office bedroom that I can bring to an office. It's Alexa! She said, Alexa, play music. The Alexa puck in the office heard her, and the Alexa downstairs, 30 plus feet away, and one floor below, heard her and responded. Just how sensitive are these microphones? That thing can hear anything said anywhere in the house. So I'm going to come back to the same thing I've said before. If you're not using it, turn it off. If, you're not, if you've got Alexas, they've got to be on a separate network. Because otherwise, people can reach into Alexa, reach into your network, and start hacking at your computers. The other problem with Alexa, as I said, it listens 24 hours a day as long as it's turned on. Now, you can hit the button and it says it's muted and it changes color. Do you really? I had no idea that, that the, the electronic book from, uh, Kindle, from uh, Amazon now had Alexa on it. I didn't install it. You got installed with a software upgrade. If you're not using it, turn it off. You got, a, you got an electronic book, turn it off. You got an Alexa, unplug it. Don't trust the mute. If there's no power going into it, it can't respond. Simple as that. Next slide. So, <coughs> biggest takeaway. Don't trust that it's off when it says it's off. Make sure it's off by taking the power away. If you have a device that you're not sure if it's off or not, like an electronic book, put it in some kind of sound uh, proofing. 
material and you're not using it. Now, if you hold the button down on those long enough, they actually will turn off and you can see it click off. Turn them off. Next slide. So, I have said enough about, you know, things I want to buzz through, but again, if you're not using it, turn it off. And if you have them, they need to be on separate networks because otherwise, they're reaching out. People can reach into them and then from there, bridge into your network. As soon as they bridge into your network, they have access to your computers. Any vulnerabilities anywhere in the network, they find it, and now they own it. So be careful. Next slide, please. Ah, my favorite song. Internet service providers. People think that internet service providers are their friend. No, they protect me. They give me internet, they give me a firewall, and all is good in the world. I have a bridge also. If you have a home service, uh, that means not business grade service. If you have a home service with BIOS or with Spectrum or any of these, they give you the password to the device that they can provide you with internet. Now, when they install them, they send an installer to your house or your business. That installer, many times, is actually not an employee of that company, they're a contractor. And they contract for all of them. Installation thing. Pull a cable, you run it up, plug it into the device, turn it on, the little blinky lights blink the right pattern, hey, it's working. Hey. They've got all the passwords for everything. Now, they do try to be reasonably good to not hiring thieves, but hey, bad apples get into anything. These people that are doing installations have full access to those devices, they have all the codes. That's scary. Nice slide. So they plug it up, they walk in, and they walk away, and you have internet and you have protection, right? No. Over half the time, these devices come by default without having the firewall functions. They have basic minimum firewall functions. It's a little quick button in the menu to turn on. And over half the time, when you inspect these devices, it's never been clicked. It's turned off. There's no firewall function. Go in there, log into it, you've got the password if you've got a residential account. Log into it, make sure the firewall is turned on, make sure the security is turned up. Those that have it turned on generally have it turned low because it causes less problems for the, for the ISP. It just goes through it. Great, right? that's what you want. Um, but you really you need to look. The other thing that's, that's in these devices, which is very scary, something called UPNP. Universal plug and play. It was designed more than 10 years ago. Universal plug and play was designed because of gaming. You know, the Microsoft, play, the PlayStations, the Sony, the Microsoft gaming stations, all these, they invented online gaming. And all these people wanted to get online. So they needed ports open in the firewall to get these boxes to be able to communicate between themselves. All wonderful. So somebody said, hey, people are complaining. Uh, we can't, you have to manually open ports. We'll invent this thing called the UPNP. <laughs> these, these gaming stations can go request at the firewall, hey, I need port 5020 and 5021 open. Please open it for me. And because it's behind the firewall, hey, it's all good. I have permission to open it. So they open it. The problem is UPNP has no security built in. It has no authentication in there to say that this device that's behind the firewall actually has authority to command those ports open. And, believe it or not, the authority is a blanket authority. You can turn the entire firewall off through one command in UPnP. It just brings down the entire firewall. And you'll never know it's down. Because UPnP authorized it. So if you take and bring your phone out, and you manage to get your phone infected, which can happen in a coffee shop or any place that you might use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You bring your phone back in the house and jump on the network with it. Now it can command the firewall to completely come down and, and send a message to whoever just told put that virus stuff on there. And now it can they can invite themselves on your network. Isn't that wonderful? And that's because UPMP has turned on in every single one of these devices that I've inspected. Every single one by default has UPMP. Universal plug and play turned on. Now, every security expert in the world that I'm aware of will tell you that needs to be turned off. Period, point blank, full stop, no UPNP. 
Now it's easy to turn off, it's one button click. <coughs> you just go into the menus, and if you're a residential customer, you can go one button click and go turn it off. You gotta find it, it's buried somewhere in the advanced settings, but you can do it yourself. Just turn it off. Ah, but if you're a business customer, the store is a little different business. They still have UPMP turned off. I've tested it and proved that it. it's there. You don't have the password to the cable modem or to the uh, box provided by Verizon. Because as a business customer, you're not authorized to go in there. They're fully protecting you. So if you call them up and say, hey, Verizon or whomever, your suppliers, hey, I don't want UPMP turned on. They don't do it. They don't make individual changes to these devices, and they're all turned on. The only thing you can do as a business person with a business uh, quality uh, connection is put your own firewall in this place. You tell them to bridge the cable modem or the uh, Verizon device to it, and now you have your own firewall that protects you, and you can turn off UPnP, and you can do other things. Now, the other problem with these devices is the ones that are owned by the, by the ISP, they can come in through the front of it. They've got the magic password. <coughs> so again, if they have a bad apple, they can walk right through it, come in from the front side using their magic passwords, and start hacking their computers. So again, this is a real problem. As a business, you really need to have your own file. Next slide, please. Uh, next.